Um, this is my Scion FRS. It's a 2014. Um, basic oil change today. Nothing crazy. So I'm going to show you the best part about having a tube frame car. Access jack points. Right on the so real quick, I'm going to go over some safety tips if you're changing your own oil or anything like that at home. Um, obviously, I'm on a hill. Uh, this is a manual vehicle. Uh, regardless of it being manual or automatic, make sure your e-brake is on, um, as well as you want to have some chucks on. I personally kind of like to have the jacks uh, still there. Um, they're on the jack stands right now, but I've had jacks break on me before and I've seen it happen several times as well. Um, so I like to have this um, at tight so that it's a backup. Once you have your car jacked up, you're signing up for us. It's gonna be, oil pans down here. It's back behind your headers. Um, right there, I don't know if you guys can see it very well. The lighting's kinda poor, right there. There's your bolt for your oil pan. So you're gonna loosen that, take that off, make sure you know you got an oil pan underneath. And I believe, if I remember right, it's a 14, so um, a 14 millimeter. So oh, let's see here. I want to make sure it is. Yes, it is. I did remember right. I'm gonna put the camera down for this just because. Um, I don't want to lose the bolt into the pan, which makes a dirty mess, and also it is um, gonna go everywhere because the oil's kind of warm right now. Uh, it is 110 degrees out in California where I am, so I'm gonna put this down. Ooh, I made a little mess, anyways. That's okay. It's not that big of a deal. So now that the oil is draining, um, you want to change out this little crush washer. Um, whoops, I'm looking at the wrong side of the bolt. Sorry, I'm like looking through the camera instead of at it. Um, there's this little crush washer. Sometimes it's like wedged against the actual um, bolt itself. So you might have to take a little flathead and like give it a little bit of a pry. But generally, they just kind of... Okay, cool. I like that. Um, generally, they, they pop off. And, oh Jesus, <laughs> or not, you know, whatever. Um, a lot of different companies use a lot of different crush washers. And if you don't, um, I mean, I'm using all the dealership stuff. You don't have to. Um, if you go to like O'Reilly's or what you call it, Cragen still, it's not Cragen anymore. Um, yeah, you can buy them in bulk. I have some of those uh, just in case I forgot or whatever. And they're really easy to lose. I mean, it's just like a tiny little crush washer. This is kind of new. Um, the last couple ones that I had didn't have this. Um, generally, the oil filters are totally dry. Um, so I always dip my finger into a thing of oil and grease it up. And just to lubricate the area, as you can see, it's already been done on this oil filter, which is pretty cool. I can totally skip that step and not have... Um, my poor finger covered in globs of oil. So this is pretty nice. So <clears throat> next up is the oil filter. Um, some people can take these off by hand. Uh, it kind of, it depends on the person, right? So um, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Um, this is pretty nice for the FRS, like the filters right there. Um, literally, here's the front of the car, here's the filter. The RX-8, it's like way back there and it's like the worst angle ever. So I actually have one of these. Um, it just attaches to a ratchet or, you know, your power drill, or not drill, um, your impact. And, you know, this is obviously not the right size. This is for an RX-8, RX-7, it, or RX-7 FD, not FC. They don't fit FCs. Actually, the FC one would fit the, yeah, it would fit the, FRS, you should get one. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, so one of the major things that I see, if you do use one of those, use it to take it off. Don't use it to put the oil filter back on. I think that's like the most common mistake I see people do. Um, you wanna hand tighten the oil filter. 
don't use an impact or like a ratchet to like put the oil filter back on. You're gonna over tighten it um, as you drive the car and stuff. It heats and cools down and when that happens, the metal and everything uh, expands and then it contracts. And over time, it's gonna tighten even more. Um, you're gonna have a hell of a time taking it off. Which is nice, it's right here. Wow, I told you this, because I was like looking through the camera, I'm like, huh? Um, oh wow, that, okay, well, that's not that easy. Okay, um, I'll do that in a second. But I don't know if you guys know this uh, about disposing oil in California. Um, the, you, uh, the recycling company out here in Northern California will actually take it curbside. So if you're trying, if you have own a house or like if you live in an apartment, it's the same deal. Um, just if you live in an apartment, it has to be clear containers, um, completely see-through. Uh, it can have a sticker or two on it. It's not a big deal, um, but it needs to be in a clear container. Um, limited contaminants, meaning like don't mix your oil with your coolant. It, they're not going to take it. Or if there's any water in there, they're not going to take it. Um, if there's a little bit of water, so like let's say in the, like, I'll give you an example. Like if you had like a, <clears throat> give me an example of like reasonableness. I guess if it's like a bottle of oil like this, and obviously don't dispose of it like this. Again, it needs to be in a clear bottle. Um, if you had this much oil in it and maybe like this much water, they might take it. But um, generally they won't. So be really careful about where you store your used oil until you can dispose of it. Um, they will also take, you can actually dispose of oil filters and you basically take like a flathead and a hammer. And what you do is, uh, I put my oil filter outside. Uh, drain it completely out, let it drain overnight, and then grab your oil filter. I'll give you an example here. Ow, that's hot as fuck. Okay, um, basically puncture a hole at the base up here, and so that they know that it's completely clean and clear. Um, if you do that, you can actually throw away it in the trash. Um, or you can leave it, if you're really not sure, you can leave it curbside, see if then in like a plastic bag and obviously don't have it be covered in oil. Um, and they'll take it. So, just a cool FYI. Um, I realized a lot of people don't realize that and um, it's just a lot easier than having to like drive your dirty oil to like O'Reilly's or like drive your contaminated oil to the actual like recycling place um, and dispose of it. Um, they'll actually dispose of it for you, but um, if you live in a household, you actually can't leave it in clear containers. You actually have to request specific containers from the recycling place. So when it's trash day on Friday, if you like leave them like a note on like the recycling bin, like, hey, I'd like to get an oil container. I do not own, I have one. Please leave me one curbside or something like that. Um, or if you catch them, then they'll give you one. They always have like, I think each truck carries like six or seven of them. And they'll hand you like, you can have a maximum of up to two per household. So, and it's just like a gallon milk jug looking thing, but it actually has their like label on it. So you can't really just clean out like a, like your own milk jug and like stick it out and they won't take it.